behind me is an all-electric battery-powered motorhome, which I'm going to trial for the night. I'm going to go on a little road trip. But first, I'm going to get some questions answered. Why offer an electric motorhome? I think it's an appropriate thing to do when you're in a tourism business and people are really curious about electric um, vehicles generally so why not have the option when you want a holiday, holiday electric. Is it a compromise? Does it still work like a normal motorhome? I think it works brilliantly, even better than a normal motorhome because of course you've reduced your carbon emissions and you're travelling lightly. It's a full two person, two berth we call it, um, toilet shower so it's got a full kitchen and toilet shower. Tell me about the vehicle underneath, what is it? So it's an LDV cab chassis. They come in as a van edition and we buy a blank back and then build the motorhome in New Zealand. Do you do anything differently when building an electric motorhome than you would with an internal combustion motorhome? Mm, that's a good question. There's a lot of design that can be borrowed from an internal combustion motorhome design, except that we know we want to do it you know, more aerodynamically designed with lighter weight materials and things like that. So it really consumes less um, power on the road so we get more kilometers out of the vehicle. Mm. Talk now on that note, how far does it go? How fast does it go? Yeah, so around 120 kilometers on a single charge, and that's going to depend on driving style and conditions as well. We designed some uh, electric itineraries to complement the vehicle as well. So we've got two, one in the North Island and one in the South Island, and we've got a partnership with uh, Holiday Parks New Zealand that installed some specific charging units in uh, their sites, so they're called EV friendly sites, and you can plug in and charge overnight at those sites. A quick look at the technical specs. This LDV80 electric motorhome has a 56 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery pack located under the vehicle. This gives it a real world range of around 120 kilometers or 75 miles per charge, and its 100 kilowatt electric motor offers enough power for it to tackle New Zealand's tough hills. All the appliances are electric from cooktop to hot water with absolutely no carbon emitting petro fuels on board. Its 12 volt system is topped up both through the main traction battery and through a solar panel on the vehicle's roof. There are two ways to recharge this vehicle. With AC charging you can use either a caravan socket or type 2 connector allowing the motorhome to charge at 6.6 kilowatts with both cable types supplied. Or if you're covering a lot of miles in a day, you can use DC rapid chargers charging at 30 kilowatts, enough to get it from empty to 80% full in about 45 minutes. Enough talk, let's put this baby on the highway and go camping. But my eco-friendly camping trip was about to be slowed down by Auckland's infamous traffic. My destination was Miranda Hot Springs Camping Ground, a geothermal hot pool and camping facility 85 kilometres away. This sort of distance didn't have me concerned, at least not yet anyway, but the traffic was indeed a problem. If the roads didn't ease, it was very likely I'd be driving this big vehicle through New Zealand's winding country roads in the dark. Well, making good progress, been driving for about an hour and a half now and I'm finally at the edge of Auckland, which is good. But all of this stop-start driving hasn't really been very stressful because this thing's basically just a giant automatic. And if this was my gas car, all the stop-start driving with the noise and the vibration and the smell and the gear changes, it would have worn me out, but I feel quite relaxed in this thing. And before long, I was liberated from the traffic, flying down the motorway, making sure to wave at all the gas stations I drove past in this eco-friendly motorhome adventure. Darkness soon fell along with the temperature as I neared my destination. I used the vehicle's electric cabin heater which blew very hot air but I was aware my range and energy levels were beginning to run a bit low so I was glad when I could finally pull into the camping grounds. Hooray I've made it and not a moment too soon as you can see the old battery meter is looking a little bit a little bit sad. I wasn't worried no range anxiety. <laughs> With my camper in its space, I plug the supplied Type 2 charging cable into both the EV charging point and the vehicle. Then I connected the 230 volt supply for the stove and hot water. With the vehicle charging, I dropped the shades and began making this camper feel more like home, adding a bowl of fruit, a family photo and a great book, which only left cooking dinner. Now one of the worst things about camping is the food. Typically people don't cook, they just reheat open cans of processed food and all that and I'm going to try and do something completely different. I'm going to cook a real meal, see if it's possible in this little electric micro kitchen. So let's get cracking. With the ingredients laid out it was time to create an actual meal. Tonight I'm going to cook honey and lemon chicken served on a bed of rice. Easy camping food. 
I do have one little complaint about this vehicle's design. Now, if you want to rapid charge the vehicle and go in the back and quickly make a cup of tea or a very fast casserole, unfortunately you can't. None of the induction tops or microwave or the power sockets on the wall will work unless you're connected to an external 230 volt supply. Now when I made my electric car and put a little kitchen in the back, that still ran on gas so I could still cook while rapid charging, but this one you can't. One of the downsides of it being completely gas free and eco-friendly is that you need an external 230 volt supply to operate the uh, high drain devices. And before long, a hearty home-cooked meal was served up. But was it better than reheated baked beans? Mm, that's pretty good. The dinner was a fantastic success, which only left doing the washing up. And there we go, that's the dishes all done. Huh, made in the USA. <laughs> Don't see anything made in the USA anymore. Break and chip resistant, <laughs> like my heart. They've really thought of everything. They've even included a electric heater, which is great because it's getting quite cold in here. Problem is, I think the thermostat's broken because it's only blowing cold air. So it's going to be a, uh, a brisk evening. That was an understatement, but I had enough to keep me busy figuring out where I was going to sleep. The seating at the back reassembled into a surprisingly spacious double bed, which I was looking forward to sleeping in. And after relaxing with a good read, I settled in for a good night's sleep. The next morning was a bit of a blur. With the lack of a heater, it was about 6 degrees Celsius or 43 degrees Fahrenheit inside the cabin, which called for a serious dose of coffee in order to address a big problem. I want to talk to you about the elephant in the room. No, not my Aunt Maggie, but this vehicle's range. 120 kilometers is just not enough, and that's what people are writing in the comments section right now, I promise you. But actually, it is. I mean, first of all, this is an early concept. This is an early design. It's going to get better with time. But given what we now know about the effects of carbon on the environment, it's a real no-brainer. You have to stop driving gas and diesel. We've got no choice, if you believe in science. But thirdly, it's kind of fun. Yeah, you could go and rush, rush, rush in an internal combustion to get to your destination, but there's something cool about stopping at rapid charges to explore little towns and villages and have a coffee and all that. It's, 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 it's what people do on holiday. And not only that, you can go campsite hopping, going from campsite to campsite, exploring little places in the world like this. I mean, it's kind of awesome. But enough about range, let's talk about this motorhome's bathroom amenities. This motorhome has a toilet and shower built in. Uh, I'm not using the toilet because there's toilets at the camping ground and I don't want some poor technician to have to remove my hot logs when I drop the motorhome back, but I am going to have to use the shower in order for this to be a real test. It's just a bit small, so we'll give it a go. Don't worry, I'm not taking the camera in there. And while I'm busy having an eco-friendly shower, now's an ideal time to tell you about Ecotricity, which... Oh, I dropped the soap. ...is New Zealand's only 100% Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity provider... Offering electricity sourced from 100% wind, hydro, and Ow. solar power. Freshly showered, and having made the tough choice of what to wear, it was time to unplug this fully charged motorhome ready to hit the road. And once I'd found an empty piece of road, I was able to test something that literally dozens of you haven't asked me about, this motorhome's acceleration. Forty. Fifty. Sixty. Seventy. Eighty. Ninety. Okay, so you wouldn't want to be late for a meeting on one of these. It's getting there. Almost at 100. 100. I'll freely admit that this vehicle has impressed me much more than I thought it would due to its intelligent use of space, creature comforts, and most importantly, tiny carbon footprint. So what's my verdict? 
Well, I would say the only downside to this vehicle is the 120 kilometers of range. But even that is questionable given the very nature of motorhoming where you're going slowly from place to place throughout the day. Uh, in terms of comfort, there's been no compromise. It's just as comfortable as an internal combustion camper, maybe even more so because of the driving aspect. It's much more relaxing to drive an electric vehicle than it is an internal combustion vehicle. Anyone that's driven one will know exactly what I'm talking about. Leaving Auckland yesterday in that stop-start traffic, that would have been a hell in an internal combustion camper. I think that this is definitely a sellable product. It's definitely perfect for someone who is worried about their carbon footprint. I would definitely do it again and I'm pretty thrilled that I got to take part in what is undeniably the future of motorhoming.